Good morning. Welcome to day one. It is a strange and a sad uh, day here in our church. Uh, I've got uh, Philip Blackburn here, and I've got um, Jenny Law and Becky Struble and Charlotte Scott and myself, and I've got uh, Rebecca Martin, and that's it. And so it is a, a difficult time uh, for us all, and we know that. And I was thinking about how uh, the Apostle Paul starts the book of Philippians, actually the letter originally to Philippians. He says to them, how I long to be with you, how I long to be there with you. And yet we know he couldn't be. And so he wrote them a letter. And we have that letter till today in the book of Philippians. We long to be with you and we cannot. And so we pray that this morning, uh, this will be your church's love letter to you, that this will be uh, God's love letter to you this week. As we begin, I want to share a couple of things with you. This morning at 10 a.m., we will be having a live stream of Phil's Sermon on the Mount class, so stay tuned. And at 11 a.m., we will live stream um, the sanctuary service, and you are invited to return if you would like. Also this week, we are starting a new twice daily devotional beginning tomorrow morning. Stress to the nines uh, will begin at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. each day, a short devotional with scripture reading and prayer from one of your pastors. That will be on our Facebook page. Also at Wednesday at 1 p.m. this week on Facebook as well, I will teach a class on the meaning of silence in our lives. Finally, we want to keep connected with you as often as we can and as much as we can. We have added prompts in our feed today so that you can participate in worship as much as possible in your living room. And if you would like to include a prayer today, just put that in the comment section on our Facebook page and we will share those prayers in worship today. Also, the office will be open all week long, 8.30 to 3 p.m., Call Jean if you would like to talk. Uh, call if you have questions. And we have been uh, sanitizing the sanctuary over and over again. So if you would like to come and just sit uh, in your church sanctuary, uh, feel free. Feel free to come down and knock on the door, and we would love to let you in. As we begin worship today, we know that we are together in one spirit, the body of Christ. Let us sing. Let us pray. Lord, you are our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? You are the very stronghold of our lives. Of whom should we be afraid? We come to you today with trust. We come to you today leaning on your promises. We come to you today with praise on our lips, not just for what you do, but for who you are. That you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and that you hold our lives in your hands. We offer you this day 
our prayers of confession. We offer you the burdens that we carry, the sin that would keep us from you. We lay those before your throne now. We turn from them and we turn again to you, for we long to hear your word to us. We long to hear your living word. So prepare us again. Prepare our hearts. Prepare our minds. It is in your precious name that we pray. Amen. Our scripture today comes to us from the prophet Isaiah, from chapter 11. These words will seem familiar to you, so listen again to God's word. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nation shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Thanks be to God for his holy word. Just reading that text aloud to you, it makes me feel like we should be putting the Christmas trees up here at church, that we should be decking the halls, which, of course... Even if it were Christmas, we would not be doing that today or in the days to come. But we think of Christmas when we hear these words from Isaiah because we read this passage every December. The two have become linked in our hearts. The shoot from the stump of Jesse and Christmas garland. <laughs> the wolf lying down with the lamb and the choir singing carols. But this passage does not come out of Christmas. It was not written for those getting ready to celebrate. These words were written out of hard times. For Israel, the world as they knew it had fallen. It began with the fall of the Assyrians. They were completely cut down. In fact, the language is of this entire forest being decimated, every tree gone. But it was not just Assyria who was affected. The fallenness has hit, in Israel, hit, is, has hit Israel as well. And their whole world has now joined the turmoil. Again, the metaphor of the forest is used to describe their terrible situation. The way Isaiah puts it just one chapter earlier is that the remnant of the trees of the forest will be so few that even a child can write them down. It is out of pain and confusion and grief and fear that the words I read to you today were written. And out of this terrible place, the words offered are not instruction on how to get out of it. The words are not admonition for how you had it coming. The words are not even a call to action for the faithful, no, these words are simply and unabashedly good news of hope. Imagine the fallen forests, the destruction of even briars and weeds all around, and then hear these words again. The Lord says, A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse and a branch shall grow out from its roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on them, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. A shoot shall come out from the stump. This is who we are. 
This is what we believe at Christmas and every day in between. We believe that God makes new life out of dead things. We trust that the Spirit of the Lord is at work in this world. And out of this belief and out of this trust, we are a people of hope. Do you remember that children's book uh, called The Giving Tree, that, that little small green volume? It's written by Shel Silverstein and has become this beloved book for so many. And it talks about all the ways an apple tree gives of itself for a little boy it loves. But as the boy takes more and more, as the boy uses up the tree's gifts, both out of need and out of foolishness, the tree runs out of gifts to give. You remember how it goes. The story ends with the boy, he's an old man now, sitting on the dead stump of the once great tree. That is all the tree has to give now, a place to sit. But we are a people who know that that is not the last page. There is another page to the story. The stump is not dead. The stump grows new life even now. So we are a people of hope even now, especially now we are a people of hope. And what is our hope? Our hope is the rest of those words from Isaiah. Our hope is, is what's come to be known as the peaceable kingdom. It is what Isaiah describes here, that from this shoot, the wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, thus says the Lord. So says the Lord. This is our hope, that a time comes when the vulnerable are safe, that a time comes when those who are enemies can live together, that a time comes when God's creation finds peace so that none are any longer hurt or destroyed. This is our great hope. And our hope has one more part to it. Our hope is that the peaceable kingdom does not rely on us, on you, or on me. This coming promise is not dependent on whether or not we can get it together or be faithful enough or wise enough. This peace is promised because the Spirit of the Lord will do it. God's Spirit will grow the new life. God's Spirit will bring about the peace. God's Spirit will renew this world. This is what your faith teaches you. This is what it teaches me. This is who you are. When the Christmas trees are being put up, this is who you are. And when every tree around you seems to have fallen, this is who you are. You are the one who trusts the Lord, and in him is your hope. Before I conclude the sermon for today, I want to leave you with an image to hold on to this week. I want to give you an image because there is no point in downplaying what each of us is going through right now. There is no sugarcoating what is happening. Many of you face lost income. Many of you cannot visit your loved ones. Many of you are filled with anxiety and fear, and our governor just yesterday announced that we will not hit the peak of this for another six to eight weeks. And in all of that, we would have wanted to be physically together, to worship the Lord together, and we cannot even do that. The bad is very bad. We know this is true. Our friend Edward Hicks knew this too. You may not think you know this man, but you have probably seen his most famous painting. 
Hicks was a Quaker pastor and artist, and he painted the most famous rendition we have of Isaiah's uh, vision of the peaceable kingdom. You can see it on your screen. Do you recognize it? I thought you might. What you may not know is, yes, Hicks painted this famous painting, but he did not paint it once. He painted it over 62 times. He did that because he was becoming so scared and so disillusioned in his world. And so every time he painted it, the beast got scarier. As he painted, the predators grew larger, grew larger claws and, and they grew sharper fangs and the bad was very bad. But even with that, he kept painting the peaceable kingdom. He kept painting it. Even when fear and despair was creeping in, he kept painting the promises of God. Our entire world is in a terrible place. And the fangs and the claws are growing sharper each day. But we keep our eyes on the promises of God. We do not renew this world. We are not the ones who make life out of death, but we trust the God who does. This week, this week, your faith asks one thing of you. Keep painting the promises of God. Share them over and over with others. Share them with yourself over and over. Be a signal, be a sign that points to what God does. Our passage in Isaiah ends today saying that that stump that grows the shoot anyway, out of its deadness, that stump stands as a signal to the people. You need not work the miracle this week, but you can surely stand as a signal. You can be a sign of the miracle that God works. This is not the last page, my friends. God's story with us does not end with a stump that has given until there is nothing left to give. There is at least one more page to come. That is the promise we have been given. That is the promise we know to be true from the one who has given everything for us. Amen. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds for our prayers of the day. All right, before we pray, a couple of things to share with you. Uh, Barry Law, you may have noticed, is missing from our music this morning. Barry's in the hospital. Uh, it is not serious. It is his gallbladder. Uh, so anyway, that was probably hip and not compliant. <laughs> but I feel like in these days, we need some sort of clarification on these sort of things. So hopefully, uh, Barry will be here and singing uh, next Sunday. So please do keep Barry and Jenny, Evan, uh, and Cameron and Victoria in your prayers uh, over this day and this coming week. Uh, also, we will conclude, as always, with the Lord's Prayer. I would remind you uh, that that is an opportunity for you to join aloud with your brothers and sisters here throughout Fort Smith and around the world as we offer that prayer. It may feel a little strange praying aloud if you are home alone uh, or with one other person, but let's, let's see if we can do that. Uh, when we reach that portion of our prayers this morning. With that said, let us pray. Great, holy, and merciful God, we come before you today as people who remain grateful. Even in the midst of all these fears and worries, trepidations, concerns, we are grateful for what we have. We're grateful for one another, for our brothers and sisters in Christ. 
We're grateful for the technology which allows us to maintain communications with each other. We're grateful for the roofs over our head, the food in our kitchens, and the love that we share with friends and family. More than anything, though, we are grateful for the timeless promises of Jesus Christ in our lives. We are grateful that the promise of a shoot from a stump is eternal. It was not limited to one moment, to one challenge, to one suffering, but rather that shoot is ever growing in our hearts and in this world. And it is a shoot that promises to become a magnificent tree of life under which we may shelter, from which we may eat, and through which we will be reminded of the power and the grace and the love of God for each of us through Jesus Christ our Lord. We are grateful, but we are also worried. And so we take this time now to think about the areas of our lives which are causing us anxiety. It's practically all of them. We worry about our family and our friends. We worry about the roof over our heads. We worry about the amount of food in our kitchens. We worry about how long this will last. We are worried. And so we take this moment of silent prayer to offer our specific worries up to you, not in the expectation that you will magically solve them, but in the promise that you are in even our fears and that through Jesus Christ, our fears can be transformed. And so we offer them to you now. But just because a pandemic has befallen us does not mean that there are not other prayers which we need to lift to you today. Our regular prayers for specific people and situations in our lives about which we have concern or where we want you to work. And so we take this time to offer to you our prayers for particular people and situations. Holy God, as we consider the world around us, we pray for certain specific people today. We pray for scientists, for doctors, for nurses, for medical workers, and we ask that you would grant all of them wisdom and strength in these days. We pray for leaders in our country, in our state, and throughout this world that in the midst of difficult choices, you would grant them wisdom and compassion always. And we pray for people throughout this world who are sick and who are suffering and who are afraid. We ask that you would be with all of your creation during this time. Lord, we offer all of these prayers to you this day in the sure and certain hope of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
While we usually take an offering during our offering time, during this time we will be offering the gifts of our lives over and over to the Lord, offering the gift of worship. And so let us pray with gratitude for that. Let us pray. Lord, we do offer you our lives. We pray that whatever gifts you have given us, you will show us how to use them how to use them to be a sign in this world of your love and of your care and of your new life. We would ask that whatever gifts you have given us, you would multiply them as needed so that we can be Christ's hands and feet in this world. It is in your name that we pray all things and together say, Amen. As you go out, I would send you out with this blessing. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness. May he protect you through the storms. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once more into these doors. Amen. May Christ's peace be with you this day.